Pinterest, quilt blogs, even YouTube, all have a wealth of information on tutorials for how to make different quilt blocks. But what if you find the perfect block, but it is not the perfect size? If you wanna make that block bigger to match up with other blocks that you've already made, or maybe you're making a sampler and you really need a 16 inch block, well, Quilt Math is going to help you. It's gonna to come to your rescue. And resizing blocks is not a difficult task. It's all about using some easy tips and some simple math to make the quilt block of your dreams. And I'm gonna show you how. So before we jump into the math, I wanna go over a couple of tips that will make this whole process a lot easier. And the first one, the very most important one, is to avoid stupid math. As you will see, some blocks are going to naturally fit into a set of sizes and other blocks are going to naturally fit into a different set of sizes. Can you force one into the other? Yes, but you're gonna end up with some really weird, fussy cutting instructions. So at least at first, kind of stick with the easy math and then you won't even need a calculator. It's, it will make your life just a lot easier. My second tip is that if you have software that will help you do this, then use it. There is no award for doing this all longhand. Um, when I'm designing blocks, I use two different pieces of software. I use Electric Quilt 8 and I use Adobe Illustrator. Now, they both have their pros and cons. EQ8 comes with an extensive block library, which is really helpful when you need ideas or um, just want to put together a really quick quilt. EQ8 will also give you kind of cutting instructions. Now these aren't cutting instructions like you see in a finished pattern. They are not like cut a strip with the fabric. That's all math that you're still going to have to do with EQ8, but it will tell you the sizes of pieces that you need to cut to assemble a block. It will not give you any time-saving measures. It won't help you do strip piecing or multiple at a time. So it's going to assume that you're gonna make a flying geese block with three triangles rather than doing it four at a time or even with the kind of stitch and flip method. So that's definitely something to consider when you're using EQ8. There's still some math to be done. Adobe Illustrator is great because you can draw a block exactly how you want it to look and then add all your seam allowances automatically and uh, move the pieces around to see how they might fit on a layer cake square, for example. And then you have a cutting schematic ready to print. But there is a pretty significant learning curve to Adobe Illustrator. I've been using it for a couple of years now and I'm still learning new time-saving techniques. So it was pretty clunky there at the beginning. You can also do it all longhand, which is how I'm gonna show you how to do it today. Tip number three, if you are resizing a block from instructions that you already own or a pattern you already own or from a tutorial you found on the internet, then ignore the cutting instructions that come with the tutorial or pattern. You want to look at the diagram of the finished block. And that's where we're gonna start. If you try to work with the cutting instructions, then you're gonna have to subtract all of the seam allowances out before you begin modifying the sizes of those units. And it's often more trouble. My final tip is to, while we're taking this block apart, think about any time-saving steps that you can make in the sewing process. If you're looking at a block that has four flying geese, then why not think about your cutting instructions to accommodate four at a time flying geese? Is there some strip piecing you can do? Then plan on that and incorporate that into your new cutting instructions that you're gonna make. So let's jump in with some block math and resize some blocks. I have three printed out here to serve as examples for resizing. And I chose these blocks because they are all based on a different grid system. And that is the key to resizing blocks. Now, look at this block compared to this block and this block. This is a three by three grid system block. So if you draw lines at the seam lines, and I'm not doing a perfect job here, but that's okay. You have a three unit by three unit block. Now the grid system of a block is always based on the smallest component of that block for 99% of the cases. So this is a three by three grid block and it's really obvious. Now, if we were to draw on the seam lines of this block, it would seem like a three by three grid as well. This is how we would assemble this block, right? 
we would have our little corner pieces, we would have four flying geese in that center. But in reality, this is a four by four grid block. Because we want all of the squares in our grid, just like on graph paper, to be the same size. So this corner unit, this half square triangle unit, is the basis smallest unit of this block. And it dictates the size of the rest of the grid. And this also points out another construction issue. You could make this unit as a flying goose, or you could make two half square triangle units. And that's just a construction decision that you can make. And now if we look at this block, this is a five by five grid block. We have all these little half square triangles, and then we have this kind of center sashing long rectangle. Now, ultimately, when we go to write our cutting instructions from our resizing, we're gonna kind of reassemble these squares into a single piece of fabric. We're not gonna cut five individual blue squares and sew them together when we go to assemble this block. But for resizing purposes, when we're trying to figure out um, cutting instructions, we need to break this down into the smallest components. So when you're trying to decide what the grid system of a block is, then looking at the smallest components are usually going to be your best bet at figuring that out. For all of these blocks, actually, it was all these little half square triangles. Here, it was this unit, here, it was this unit, and here, it was these half square triangles. So once you've identified the grid system of your block, we can go back to that tip number one, which is to avoid stupid math. Now blocks that have a three by three grid or an odd grid are going to naturally resize into multiples of three, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. Whereas an even numbered grid, like this four by four grid, are going to naturally resize into four inch, eight inch, 12 inch, 16 inch, 20 inch blocks. So if we kind of keep within those bounds using the multiple of the grid size as a guide, then resizing blocks is gonna be really easy. Can I make a 15 inch block out of this four by four grid? Yes. Is it gonna be really awkward cutting? Probably. So I probably wouldn't choose to make that block. If I had to make this even numbered grid block fit into an odd numbered grid space, I would probably cheat a little bit and do like sashing around a block or a little border around a block just to avoid having that awkward cutting experience. So let's resize this block. I found a tutorial that had a six inch finished measurement for this tutorial for this block. So they had me cutting like two and a half inch square for the center and making two and a half inch um, half square triangles that would finish at two inches. So that once this is all put together, it's a six inch block. But let's say we wanna make it 15 inches. I want this whole block to be 15 inches once it is finished. So I want it to be 15 and a half inches when it's raw outside of a quilt because I want that seam allowance. So the very first step is to take that 15 inches, which is kind of our goal size for our block, and divide it by the grid. Now this is a three by three grid. I want to divide our 15 by three. And that gives me five inches. Five inches is our base unit for this block. That means that every unit in these squares, I want to finish at five inches. So now it's just a matter of identifying the units and adding our seam allowances and whatever extra fabric we need to make those units. So first one is the easiest one, the square in the center. We want it to finish at five inches. So we are gonna cut a five and a half inch square. I'm going to start a cut list. So for pink, we have a five and a half inch square. 
So now that we have our center square taken care of, it's time to deal with these half square triangles that go around that center square. Now there are many ways to make half square triangles and I have a whole video on how to do the math to make various methods, but let's assume we wanna make two at a time half square triangles here. So we have eight half square triangles in our finished block. So we're gonna to need to make four sets of two at a time half square triangles. So to end up with a five inch finished half square triangle. I know that I want to cut six inch squares from my fabrics so that I have room to sew them together to make the half square triangles and also to trim them just a little bit. So I am going to need four six inch squares of pink and I'm going to need the same thing in cream. Four six inch squares of cream. And that's all we need for our cut list. Now we can cut according to our measurements that will yield a 15 inch block and follow the steps in the tutorial that you found. Um, the assembly is going to go together the exact same way. You're gonna make half square triangles the same way. They're just gonna be a different size now so that instead of a six inch block where you're making little tiny two inch half square triangles, you're gonna be making five inch half square triangles and follow the steps in the tutorial and you'll have a 15 inch block. So let's do that again on our four by four grid block, which has some more complex elements. So originally this tutorial was sized for an eight inch block, which had me making two inch finished half square triangles and two by four flying geese. But we wanna make a really big block. Let's say we wanna make Let's do something fun. Let's do a 40 inch block. I wanna make a baby quilt that is this one giant block. So the first thing we need to do is take our goal size and divide it by our grid system. So there are four blocks in my grid. So that leaves us with a key size of 10 inches. Now, unlike the last block, we don't have like a single center square that is that 10 inches finished. We do have this group of four that are all the same fabric. We would like to combine them so we don't have to sew the same colored fabric together. So we wanna cut this square all in one piece, but and we know that each grid is 10 inches. So 10, 10, 10. So this is a 20 inch finished square. So let's start our cut list and we'll call that color lime. So our first cut is going to be a 20 and a half inch square because we need to add our seam allowances in. This is the finished measurements of the block, this 10 inches. We need to be sure that we're adding seam allowances so that our block actually comes together. So that takes care of this square. So now let's tackle these half square triangles around the corners of our block. We know that we want to have them finish at 10 inches because that's our key number. So to make two at a time half square triangles, we add an inch to the finished measurement. So I know I'm gonna be cutting 11 inch squares. And I'm going to need two line and I'm gonna need two gray, two 11 inch squares. So now it's time to tackle these flying geese around the edges of our block. You can make these as flying geese or you can make them as half square triangles. It is a completely up to you construction decision. Let's say I wanna make them as half square triangles this time and there are eight of them two on each side. So let's make eight at a time half square triangles. So I know that I'm gonna need one big square of gray and one big square of dark green. And if my half square triangle math is correct, that is gonna be a 22 inch square. So now that you have your cut list, you can make the units and refer back to that original tutorial or just look at the picture of the block for your kind of assembly instructions. You know how to make a half square triangle and you know how to sew together the final grid. Just lay the pieces of the block out and sew them together in a grid like you would any other block. So now let's look at a block with a little bit more 
complexity to it. This is the Oddfellows chain, which I found in my EQ8 software. And it is very similar to this block that we did for our four patch block. It has those kind of flying geese units, this big center unit, and these little corner units. But it is much more complex. So this is actually an eight by eight grid block. And it is just the same as the blocks that we already did. We can draw our lines across, maybe with a ruler or something so you're not as messy as I am. Now resizing a block like this that has like a really large grid is a little bit more daunting and you're a little bit more likely to end up with that key number size that is um, not a whole number. So let's say we wanted to make this a, a 12 inch block divided by eight, which is our grid, leaves us with 1.5, one and a half inches. So each of these little squares is gonna be a one and a half inch finished square. But a key number that has a half or a quarter, it is just like any other quilting measurement, even the really weird sizes like seven eighths. It's just a line on your ruler. And especially with these half inch measurements, once you add your seam allowance, then you're back up to whole numbers. So for example, this corner block, we want it to finish at one and a half inches, but we would end up cutting, adding our seam allowance back in, a two inch square, which is totally doable. So I would treat this block like any of the other blocks we've done. I would break it down, make my cut list, try to combine as many blocks as I can, like these four obviously in the center. I would combine these to make flying geese and just work out from the center, making my cut list, and then I'd be ready to go at any size. And then if I wanted to go back and resize this block again into a 32 inch block, then I would just divide it by eight again, and I would get four inches for my key measurement. So now instead of cutting a two inch square, I would want this to finish at four, add my seam allowance. This is now a four and a half inch cut. And that's all there is to resizing blocks. It's all about breaking the block down into a grid, deciding how big you want those individual grid squares to be, and then combining what you can and adding that seam allowance so that you have a finished cut list for your square. Now I resize blocks all the time. And whenever I do this math, I always make a test block because I don't wanna cut an entire quilt's worth of fabric and then realize I forgot to add a seam allowance in and now none of my fabric is gonna work for me anymore. So I really encourage you to have a bundle of fabric or grab some scraps and make a test block and see how the quilt block goes together. You might find that you wanna do a different half square triangle technique or you wanna do four at a time flying geese or you wanna strip piece portions of your block. Those are all decisions that you can make once you know the measurements of the units of your block. So if you guys liked this video, then definitely let me know in the comments and tell me if you have ever resized a block um, before. So if you guys liked this, then I have lots of other ideas for other quilting math videos, like um, how to calculate yardage for an entire quilt's worth of blocks and um, how to do calculations for borders, how to add a border to any quilt. Um, so leave me a comment below and let me know if you are pro quilt math or just tell me how to cut it and I don't wanna be involved in the math behind patterns. So um, I'm very interested to see what you guys think. And I'll be back very soon with another video. And until then, happy quilting.